and uh, in November of last year uh, the opportunity for the transplant came up and we travelled four hours to Sydney uh, to the hospital where it was going to be performed and uh, the day of her operation I decided that I was going to uh, go to a church and as it happened I ended up passing by a mosque and uh, I went into the mosque. Everyone who converts to Islam always says that they are returning to Islam. This is because they were born Muslims and were only brought up in their parents' religion. Dawood Reed, formerly David Reed, is a man from Canberra, Australia. He was raised and educated in a Catholic environment. At the age of 60, he finally got the most beautiful thing in his life, which was to convert to Islam. At the age of 20, Dawood Reed began to drift away from the Catholic Church. His understanding of the Trinity began to loosen. It didn't make sense to him. But uh, all I knew was that um, I had no faith in the Trinity and in my upbringing in the Catholic Church and I couldn't ever, ever fathom how, you know, that God could be God, uh, the Father, God could be God, Jesus, and God could be God, the Holy Spirit. That was always three to me. I never knew who to pray to and I felt divided, absolutely divided. Dawood Reed is married and has two children. Every parent loves their children, so does Dawood Reed. He is very happy with his children, but his happiness had to stop. His second child died of cancer at the age of seven. Dawood Reed was very sad. He could not accept God's destiny. He really hated God at that time. Uh, my young um, second son died of cancer at the age of seven, uh, which was a very sad time in my life. And it was also the time that I turned totally against God. I hated God. And to prove it, I went and got a tattoo of a pentagram on my left hand, which I've since had removed. But uh, it shows you the mindset I had at the time after the loss of that child. The trials and tribulations in his life came one after another. After Dawood lost his beloved son, he almost lost his beloved wife. She had to undergo a lung transplant due to her illness. But this time, Dawood surrendered and accepted reality. He surrendered to God, he prayed, and wanted to go visit the church. I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to lose my wife of 30 years. And I can remember standing in the kitchen alone and very sincerely, sincerely calling out to God. And I remember that my mindset was, if it's your will, God, save my wife. And if it's not, I'm going to accept it. I'm just going to accept it. My wife came out of the intensive care unit and they were sort of like saying the next time would be the end. And two days later, that telephone call came from a Sydney hospital, St Vincent's Hospital, saying there were some lungs available. And uh, I still ponder that to this day, the effectiveness of that prayer. There was a mad dash to Sydney that evening. It was preparation for the lung transplant and early the next morning the operation went ahead and I ended up sitting outside the hospital and my first thought was you could go and have a drink you know it'd make things better and it was only a fleeting thought and I decided no I was going to look for a church and uh, still confused and I went to the nearest church that was there and the doors were locked um, I had been interested in the Noahide movement some weeks previously and thought maybe the synagogue, but uh, realised I wasn't welcome at the synagogue because I wasn't Jewish. And as it would happen, I went past a mosque. And uh, I went into the mosque, and uh, yeah, I, I gained some sort of connection there to, it all sort of fell into place over one God. It uh, became very evident to me there was one God. There was no intermediaries to, to this one God. Uh, there were no saints in the middle, there were no praying to Mary in the middle, and there was no praying to Jesus in the middle. It dawned on me that Jesus, when he was in the, uh, in the garden, was praying to God. He wasn't praying to himself. There, w there was no three in one, and uh, it just dawned on me. It was an epiphany. And then I realised, I decided that um, I wasn't going to rush into this, so I made some inquiries and I ended up doing meeting a, a nice Muslim man who uh, said he'd, he'd lead me through 
um, a course called Understanding Islam and I saw him for several weeks, um, three, four times a week and uh, he led me through the program and eventually I, it all made perfect sense to me, absolutely made perfect sense to me. Dawood had no more doubts. Everything about Islam made sense to him. Finally, he said the Shahada, Masha'Allah. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, an, an, la, la, ilaha, ilaha, illa, illa, la, la, wa ashhadu, wa ashhadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, abduhu, abduhu, wa rasuluh. Wa rasuluh. That's it. You're a Muslim. Welcome, Welcome to Islam. Trials are not fun. Trials also come in different forms. It can be in the form of wealth, physical, poverty, children, wife or husband, even to work and business relationships. However, the trials given by Allah to His servants are actually a form of Allah's love. And with these trials, humans are ready to enter a new step, whether to get closer to Allah or vice versa, away from Allah. The thing that must be remembered, Every test or trial given is always tucked away the solution. Islam is the solution to all life's problems. That uh, the morals and the guidelines of Islam uh, could cure a lot of the world's ills. And uh, it certainly has in my life. Um, God answered me. The, the transplant of my wife was successful. I've now um, gotten her and I'm very thankful to God for that. That's all for today's video. Hopefully, it will inspire many people. Go back to the Quran, because all the answers to your questions are there. Don't hesitate. Open the Quran and read it. Thanks for watching.